Now I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I'm not too familiar with the Virtualon series. I only ever played it one time in the arcade and I was a bit disappointed in myself. It looked cool, the robots looked cool, the action looked great, the special effects, this one-on-one -on -one arena fighting style that was going on. To me, it seemed awesome. But when I actually got my hands on the twin sticks, the two controls, yeah, it wasn't too great. I lost like in a matter of like a minute and then that was it for me. I was like, you know what? Nope. I just spent, I think at the time I was like a, a dollar, uh, you know, to, to play. And yeah, I, I couldn't see myself uh, approaching this game anymore just because of how confusing and difficult the controls were. Fast forward to 2003, I bought a PS2, I want to buy some games on it, and I see Virtualon right there. And I thought, hey, I'm, I got a little bit of money, I got a new console, let me, you know, expand the library a little bit. So I went ahead and bought it, mostly because there was a Sega logo on there and, well, it was on sale. So I thought, hey, I'm only spending 20 bucks. What's the worst that could happen? The Martian front is torn with conflict. Now we have to keep in mind is that the Virtualon series has and always will be an arcade themed game. And what Hitmaker was basically trying to do here is mold the one on one arena style gameplay into a, a single player experience. In the end, they end up with uh, mixed results. Initially, you start out the dramatic mode campaign with easy one on one battles, helping you get familiar with the controls. But then they start to up the ante by introducing time limits, a maze to explore, implementing handicaps, and the list goes on. The concepts are interesting, however the core gameplay hinders the experience. Especially when you're trying to jump from platform to platform, you can tell that these bots were never meant to be moved like this. Still, when going up against other virtualoids, the mechanics could be considered similar to a fighting game. Something like keeping in mind your strength and weaknesses. For example, some robots projectiles have longer ranges, but the robot themselves have lower health. And others might be better at closer ranges with higher health. The downside is that all these virtualoids do have to be unlocked. And with so many variations, it could be a while before you find one that suits you. Normally these are unlocked after defeating a certain number of bots during a dramatic mode. But if you could care less for the story, there is a challenge mode that plays much like the arcade in single player. You'll fight against a series of opponents and bosses, then your time is tallied at the end. And for anyone out there looking to play with a friend, two player split screen is also available. In regards to the controls, it's a bit of a learning curve. Picking this up after so long made me confuse Mars for Armored Core, and thus I had to relearn how to operate the controls. Still, Hitmaker did an excellent job mapping the dual stick control scheme from the arcades to the DualShock controller. Each stump stick corresponds to each stick, and the triggers are mapped to the L2 and R2 buttons. However, if you like an easier time with controls, you could stick to the default, which is Type A, where most of the complex functions are mapped to the face buttons. Sadly, despite being on superior hardware, textures and geometry look like they've been taken from the Model 3 game or Atari Tangram. It does make the game look dated, especially in 2003 when games like Armor Core 2, which had more detailed graphics, came out three years earlier. It is a bit disappointing seeing Hitmaker reuse assets like this, especially when they're aiming for a new single player experience. 
However, they did add some shading to the Ritualoid models, giving them a bit of a more defined look. Now it seems that the music was taken from Rutulon Force and Ortaya Tangram, which may seem out of place in some missions, but honestly it's good to listen to these high energetic beats straight from the arcade. It does keep the game feeling like I'm playing Rutulon, though I wish there was some more exclusive tracks that will match the arenas you're playing in. Still, Sega did it right by using what works. Presentation sticks cl close to how it was portrayed in the arcades particularly force. However, everything seems pretty static for the most part. Transitions from debriefing to character select to the actual mission seems pretty sudden and not smooth at all. The actual HUD is pretty similar to force. However, it seems to take up more of the screen than its RK brethren, which could be distracting, but not by much. The story is told in game and through cinematic cutscenes, though it is kind of hard to follow. If I were to sum up presentation in one word, I would say it's simple. Sorry to keep you waiting. You take care of the main enemy unit. Leave this one to me. The Shapeless Enemy Mars is under their vicious control. And there you have it guys, Virtual on Mars on the PS2. I gotta give this thing a C. It's an okay game. It's I as much as I love Sega and as much as I love like giant robots. This game really uh, is really underwhelming. You see, Hitmaker, they are mainly an coin op arcade experience kind of company or development studio. Their main stuff is stuff like Sega Rally, uh, Crazy Taxi, what else? The, the Horse Derby game. That's their main stay, and that's what they know. Them trying to make a single player storied experience, it's a little bit out of the element. And what keeps the game down as well would be the presentation. You see, if you were to look at a uh, virtual on, on the Dreamcast or Atari Tangram, you know, selecting your virtual is much better, the transitions are much better, it is more arcadey because you know that's what it was going for. Here it looks like they were kind of confused. Granted, there are some debriefing and story elements that get you kind of interested, even though it's kind of con convoluted sometimes, but it is, does keep your uh, attention a little bit. But the overall package is it's not quite there. And that's why I give it a, a C. Still, if you're interested in getting this game, it's pretty cheap. You could find it in box like this for around like $20, $25, or a loose copy of around $10. Anyway, this was Knockout21. Please comment, rate, subscribe, and like always, have a good one. Take care, you guys.